My name's Anthony Resinello. I'm a social and relationship coach living in Los Angeles. I've been doing this since 2005. And basically, what my job is, is to help people meet the people that they really want to in their life. Today, I've been asked to react to the allegations from offline TV towards Fedmeister. Now, the reason why I've been asked to react to these allegations and this whole situation is because this is the stuff I teach every day. I am working with men and women on how to start relationships in a healthy, non-toxic way. Now, I know very little about this Fedmeister offline TV situation, and I have purposely kept out of it because I want to come at these videos from an unbiased place, and I wanna give you my own thoughts as a social and relationship coach. Now I take situations like this extremely seriously and it's been very important to me in my work over the past 15 years to make sure that when I'm working with men on their social skills, especially in dating, that they are not coming at it from a place of manipulation or power, but only from a place of love and respect. Now, like I said, I really don't know much about this situation. I wanted to go into it cold and learn everything I can right here. So here we go. Um, I wanted to sit here and talk with you guys a bit, share my experience and share what I believe to be some much needed context around Lily and Yvonne's incidents and situations and statements. Uh, I won't lie, it's been a bit frustrating seeing people be so negative and rude towards them. Um, and so I would really like to help paint a bigger picture or a better picture and to help you guys understand. So I'm going to start with sort of my experience and it'll kind of just snowball into everything that I would like to share. Um, I'm not going to be sharing everything. I am specifically trying to share things with the intention of helping you guys understand, especially understand Lily and Yvonne's incidents. So let's rewind a year or two ago. Um, I felt a growing distance between me and the people within offline TV and also the people within our greater friend circle. This was coincidental with the time that everybody was also becoming a lot closer to Fed. Um, and Fed was by far the closest friend I had, like within OTV and just a very, very close friend to me in general. Um, albeit having a very, very complicated dynamic, uh, we were super close. And so I would share with him how isolated and ostracized I felt within our community of friends and within the house and how I really wanted to be closer friends with everyone. And also <clears throat> how sad it made me that he never invited me to tag along to things. He would often go and visit our other friends or uh, make plans. And I just thought it was really weird that if we are so close, why do you never bring me along to hang out with anyone else? Uh, even though, and also because everybody else, like I already knew them for many, many years. So even though I would bring this up to him, he still continued to act this way and exclude me. It hurt my feelings a lot. And I thought perhaps people just didn't want me around. So I did not, uh, like I didn't want to impose. And anytime he or anyone else did try to include me, the way people treated me just felt kind of off. Um, but ultimately I just put it on myself or maybe me sucking and people not liking me, I don't know. Anyways, during this time where I felt distanced from everyone else, me and Fed would have many issues. One of the more prominent ones revolved around an incident where we threw a house party. Um, as some of you guys know, we just throw house parties sometimes. And he knew that there was someone coming to the house party that I was really looking forward to seeing and getting to know. And when that guy came to the house party or arrived at the party, um, Fed kind of stuck to him like glue all night. 
But from my perspective, I was like, all oh, like, that's nice. You know, my close friend and this guy that I want to get to know, like they're getting along so well. That's really nice to see. Even though I was a bit sad that I couldn't actually talk to the guy, but whatever. Later that night after the party ended, um, I texted this guy and I was like, oh, kind of sucks. Like we didn't get to hang out. And he was like, yeah, you seemed really busy. And I was like, me busy. Like you and Fed were, you know, two peas in a pod all night. And he goes, oh yeah, like what's going on with you guys? And I was like, what do you mean what's going on? And he, the guy informed me that Fed told him that we were together when we weren't and that he told the guy not to tell anyone, not to talk to anyone about it, not to talk to me about it. And that was the first time that Fed just like massively broke my trust and I could never trust him or look at him the same way. Um, and I'm very grateful that the guy in question told me this, even though Fed told him not to. And then I retroactively asked someone else from kind of the past whether Fed had said something similar to him, and they did. And I very recently, just today, found out that he said the same thing to another guy. And the guy I found out about today was someone else that like I was seeing or wanting to get to know. But there would be many instances where we would fight and if he was in the wrong or if he ended up unhappy, he would just ignore my existence or my presence in the house. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but like literally refuse to acknowledge that I exist um, or he'd avoid me or he would go to the just friends house. So our friends house, if you guys don't know JF, they are a group of our friends who used to live together. So he would go there or pretend I don't exist, which I don't know how to explain, but that is a really weird thing to live and work with someone that is like trying to ignore you as a person. At the just friend's house, he would come over anytime things were off or tense at the offline TV house and just like be in their rooms, never knocking, just there, um, which they came to accept as just fed things. While he was there, he would always imply things were bad between me and him and lie or um, push false narratives that make him look good and make me look really bad. He would constantly talk shit about girls he would show fleeting interest in and then tarnish their reputation. They could tell girls felt scared uh, of being on bad terms with him and offline TV and felt and the girls felt like that was a bit of an abuse of power. He essentially knew that he was protected by the offline TV and friend and friends blanket. All right, so just before I go on, I'd like to just talk about what vibe I'm getting from Fed. Uh, somebody that I've never seen before. I've never seen him speak before. Um, and by the way, um, Pokimane right now, if that's how you pronounce her name. You could just tell she has a really good head on her shoulders and she's trying to keep it nonpartisan. She's just trying to talk about her experience and what happened. But from what I'm getting, um, based on who Fed is, he almost seems like the king of the nice guys. And what do people see a nice guy as and this is like what I'm when I say nice guy I mean it in terms of like how society sees a nice guy it's the guy that secretly likes all of these girls and he never actually expresses his interest in them ever um, and when he comes to find that those girls may like somebody else or may or may not show the interest in him that he wants them to, he gets upset and he turns on them. He punishes them. Um, that is the idea of what a nice guy in today's society is. Now, it seems like Fed is doing this 
on steroids. It seems like he builds these connections with women. He doesn't express how he feels in the relationship. And then when the relationship isn't going the way he'd like to, he gets angry and he retaliates in whatever way, by ignoring them, by talking shit about them, or by treating them badly directly. In my opinion, I'm not a doctor, but this mainly comes from a place of low self-esteem. It comes from a place where in his past, he was not able to get into the relationships he wanted, and he feels like a person that isn't able to date or get into the relationships he currently now wants to get into. And because of that, he feels this kind of a little bit of shittiness towards women, especially women that he likes. So because of his past of not being in the relationships that he really wants to be in, um, today he still sees that dynamic. He still lives that dynamic with the friends that he makes going, oh, she's never gonna like me, she's never gonna like me, and still being angry about it, as if those women are the women that may have rejected him in the past, and so on, and so on, and so on. These are the exact type of guys that find communities like the red pill community, or pickup artist communities, and grow their hatred around women, and try to become happier in life through demeaning women and hating women even more and trying to find ways to manipulate them eventually. Uh, this always, always will end up in a bad place unless they turn around and find a more healthy way to go about it. This was the moment we truly realized how big of a problem his behavior was and that ultimately we needed to plan an intervention of sorts. This talk with all the girls, along with everything that was shared during the intervention, um, helped us piece together and realize that he would lie about me a lot, create, create narratives in his favor, and insinuate a lot of negative things which drove everyone around me away from me. It's really hard for me to explain how bad it feels to find out that the person that I was closest to and the person that I would share how badly I wanted these friendships with was the same person that was actually isolating me and sabotaging these friendships for me. I, I don't even really know if that was his intention or not, I'd like to think it was more of an inconsiderate or careless thing, but ultimately he drove everyone around me away from me. And I started freaking crying at the intervention and after just out of like mourning the years of friendship that I lost with these people because of him. There's been multiple instances of Fed pursuing a girl in the scene suddenly losing interest, and then bad-mouthing that girl to us, giving us a negative impression of that girl. We would later find out from these girls that he made unwanted advances <clears throat> on them. While there's nothing wrong with shooting your shot with a girl, the way he does it is, uh, sorry, <clears throat> the way he does it and the way he acts after he gets rejected is really problematic because it damages the girl's reputation and hurts their character. And as people within offline TV, if we all think badly of someone and our friends also think badly of someone, that can be really impactful on someone's career in esports or on Twitch. The reason I'm so emotional and angry about this is because I think back to how I acted then and I just, I feel so bad. I feel so fucking bad that, like, I, I would talk to Yvonne, like, sternly about, like, oh, like, we need to work, we need to do this, we need to do that. And I had no idea the reason she was behaving the way that she did was because she was so incredibly uncomfortable around him. So, yeah, I just feel really bad, and I'm so sorry to Yvonne and Lily, and I really wish I knew back then. So, this Again, going back to this nice guy thing, 
It is obvious that Fed has a bad relationship with women. I don't know where this started. I don't know where this came from. However, he has a deep need for women to love him, to care for him, to show him that he's a good boy. And when they don't, he gets incredibly angry at them. So in other words, he doesn't actually see women as real friends, as people that he cares about, as real people. This is how a lot of men see women. They see women merely as things that make them happy, things that are supposed to give pleasure to men, things that are supposed to make a man feel manly. And because he has that dynamic with women, because he sees women in that way, he gets very angry when it doesn't happen. So in his mind, he's, he says, they're supposed to treat me like this. They're supposed to like me. Why don't women like me? And then they get angry and want to punish them because a lot of men have been taught to just see women this way. Now, a lot of people are into pornography. I actually believe pornography is one of the biggest reasons for objectification against women. Why? Because in porn, it is all about women doing whatever men want them to do. It is fulfilling the fantasies in a way where women are sex slaves and only that way. Now, obviously porn's not the only thing. Porn was just merely created out of toxic masculinity. Why do you think almost every piece of dating advice you have seen on the internet and on YouTube has to do with men being super aggressive towards women when they meet them? It's because the men that are teaching this are also a product of toxic masculinity. They've come from a place where they have felt rejected, have become angry towards women, and are now trying to teach other men to have this same headspace in regards to women. That's a form of therapy for a lot of people that are giving dating advice on the internet. It comes from this idea that men are the hunters and women are the targets, are the hunted, and that men should win women. That's why a lot of people call it game. Why? Because you win a game. So women are not people in which you can build a relationship with or find a connection with or find chemistry with or have a great time with. They are merely something to win. Now, if you're playing a video game or you're playing sports, what happens when you lose the game? Rightly so, you get upset, you get excited, you go, ah, I can't believe I lost. And that's okay. But guess what? Dating, friendships, relationships, that's not a game. Those are people. A relationship is about two people coming together and finding a connection, supporting each other. It's not about showing others how cool you are. It's not about validating your ego. Again, we cannot place this game headspace in the relationship arena. It just doesn't match. You could try to, but it just doesn't work in the end because people are people. They are not trophies. Now we could see this game behavior in Fed. How was he treating Pokemon? He was blocking off any other potential threats to him being in a relationship with her by telling every guy that she was potentially interested in, that she was already taken, and that he himself was dating her already, and not to tell anyone else. He was controlling his game in hopes to eventually winning. And even if he knew that he wasn't going to win later on down the road, he at least still wanted nobody else to win. Because what would that do? That would lower his value in his, in his head. Why? Because this is a game to him and he doesn't want to be lower than somebody else. Now, in a relationship 
standpoint, in a human being standpoint, you would want the person that you liked to be in a good relationship and be happy, regardless if, if, it, if it was with you or with somebody else. Why? Because this is not about validating you. This is not about fulfilling your needs. This is not about winning. This is merely about love and happiness. And to see somebody that you cared about being in a relationship, a happy relationship with somebody else, that should make you happy. Now, toxic masculinity is so deeply embedded into the dating and relationship culture that it's sometimes gonna be very hard for us to understand where it actually exists and say, oh, that's, that's it right there. Let's pick it out. Let's take it away. Because sometimes it's going to feel like, ah, I don't want to take that away. Ah, uh, how could I feel good for somebody that I care about to be in a relationship with somebody else? That doesn't, that shouldn't make me feel good. So I acknowledge that this is going to be a long road to truly understand how relationships should work completely out of selfless love and nothing else. And, and because it's been so deeply ingrained into uh, relationship culture for such a long time, I understand that it's probably going to take a while to dismantle it from having good relationships with others. Let's move on. We want to be there for him on his road to recovery and we really support him seeking professional help and I'm really glad that he is. But we also just need him to understand that he really does have some deep-rooted issues that aren't just solved by not drinking. And I just want to say, like, obviously there's still a part within me that cares about Fed, and I feel really bad thinking of him seeing me talk like this or thinking of people shit-talking him because of what I feel forced to share today. I want to apologize to him for that. I want him to be okay. We all want him to be okay. If we didn't, we wouldn't have had an intervention. We wouldn't be doing all of these things. We wouldn't have spoken to him so many times. Understand that we just felt like we couldn't enable his behavior anymore. That we tried to address it and we saw no change. This was an incredibly difficult decision to come to. Probably the most difficult decision we've ever made. It was not our first resort by any means. And initially, Yvonne wasn't even going to come out with a statement at all. During the intervention, he was surprisingly apologetic. Like we were borderline impressed at how apologetic he seemed. His words were the things that we wanted to hear. However, after the intervention, via his actions and his words to other people, <sighs> It was made very clear to us that his priorities did not lie with his victims, but with his public image. His priority was not to make things better or to be a better person, but instead it felt like it was to salvage his career and figure out his next move. Within a day or two after the intervention, he was already running to our mutual friends and trying to seem like the victim in this situation for being let go from OTV. We discussed this for days. Many phone calls were made, many talks were had, not much sleep was gotten. We tried many, many compromises, and it is so unfortunate that we felt it had to come to this. Okay, so like I said before, it seems like Pokemon is a really rational, kind-hearted person. Um, and you could see it in the fact that even after everything that happened, and I don't know the full story still yet, but after everything that happened, she still wishes the best for Fed. And she mentioned how much the rest of the house tried to resolve this issue with him, but still couldn't. And apparently they had to end their relationship with him, which means that he probably still has a long way to go in his rehabilitation. Now that's the end of this video with Pokimane. For the rest of this week, I am going to be reacting to all of the other 
videos on this situation or most of them. I don't know that I could react to all of them, but I'm gonna try to get to as many as possible. And you're gonna watch how I slowly learn more about this story and I could explain more on what's happening, why Fed is doing what he's doing. If you notice that you are doing something similar in your life, how you could change your ways and how you could have better relationships with people. And hopefully if Fed or if people like him are watching this, they can change their ways as well so they don't ever have to treat people like this again. The problem with the dating culture between men and women is that unfortunately men have been taught this. I don't believe that this is a basic evolutionary thing. I believe men have been taught to treat women like this. Why? Because it will make them look better around who? Around other men. I don't believe men do this as a way to be better with women. I believe men do this as a way to look more manly. And this is what toxic masculinity is. Sorry about that, the camera just died on me, but nevertheless, what I want this channel here to represent is for you to have a home where you could learn about building healthy, long-lasting, fun, exciting relationships with others while also learning how to stay away from any toxic ideology. Now, I don't claim to be an expert on all of this stuff. I'm learning as I go as well. The next video that I'm gonna focus on is Yvonne's, so you could meet me there right now.